we will be introducing a 100% tariff on Chinese-made electric vehicles. Canada has imposed 100% tariffs on cars made in or imported from China, mirroring actions taken by other Western governments. These governments believe that Chinese automakers have gained unfair advantages in the industry through Chinese government subsidies. You might be wondering what prompted Canada to take such a step after holding back for so long. This surprising move came shortly after U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan met with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Cabinet Ministers on Sunday. Additionally, Jake Sullivan is scheduled to make his first visit to Beijing, where he will work on improving U.S.-China relations on behalf of President Joe Biden. If these discussions are successful, both countries may resolve issues related to tariffs and other matters critical for smooth trade relations. Following the announcement of new tariffs on electric cars, which are expected to take effect on October 1st, Canada also decided to impose a 25% tariff on steel and aluminum imports from China. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau explained, actors like China have chosen to give themselves an unfair advantage in the global marketplace. Since Tesla began importing electric vehicles, EVs manufactured in Shanghai to Canada in 2023, car imports from China have surged by 460% annually at Vancouver's port reaching 44,356 vehicles. The tariffs do not only affect Chinese automakers, American companies like Tesla are also impacted as Tesla exports vehicles to Canada from its Shanghai factory. Tesla does not disclose the specific models it ships from China to Canada. However, vehicle identification numbers reveal that Shanghai is exporting Model Y crossovers and Model 3 compact sedans to Canada. If Tesla cannot find alternatives, such as switching to supply Canada from its factories in Germany, or the United States, Canadian consumers may face higher prices due to increased production costs. The UID, another Chinese EV manufacturer, could also be affected by these tariffs. The company established a Canadian corporate entity some time ago and indicated plans to focus on the Canadian market by 2025. It is expected that Chinese officials will express concerns about these tariffs during the visit of the U.S. National Security Advisor China. However, it is uncertain how easily these issues can be resolved given that the tariffs were recently implemented. As of May, U.S. President Joe Biden imposed tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, solar cells, steel, aluminum, medical equipment, and advanced batteries. President Biden has argued that Chinese government subsidies for electric vehicles and other products allow Chinese companies to sell at prices below cost, giving them an unfair advantage in international trade. For example, Chinese companies can sell electric vehicles for as little as $12,000. China also has enough steel and aluminum mills and solar cell facilities to meet most of the global demand. Chinese officials, however, contend that their production capabilities help facilitate the shift to a green economy and keep prices low. Regarding the new tariffs, Trudeau stated, we're doing it in alignment, in parallel, with other economies around the world that recognize this is a challenge we are all facing. We must stand up unless we all want to end up in a race to the bottom. Christia Freeland, Canada's Deputy Prime Minister, announced that the country would also begin a 30-day consultation period on potential duties on Chinese semiconductors, solar panels, essential minerals, metals, batteries, and battery parts. China has a deliberate state-directed policy of overproduction and overcapacity, which is intended to destroy our own industry. Freeland declared, We just cannot allow our EV sector, which has shown such promise, to suffer that way. The Chinese embassy criticized the decision, stating that Ottawa ignored Beijing's repeated protests and that the action would harm economic cooperation and trade. This is a classic example of trade protectionism and a politically driven decision that contravenes World Trade Organization regulations and undermines Canada's established position as a global advocate for free trade and climate change mitigation. The embassy stated in an email, China will take all necessary steps to protect the legitimate rights and interests of Chinese enterprises. Guy St. Jacques, a former Canadian ambassador to China, suggested that Canada's decision was influenced by its economic ties with the United States. Noting that more than 75% of our exports go to the U.S., St. Jacques stated that China is likely to retaliate against Canada and other areas, suggesting that barley and pork could be potential targets as China can easily source these products from other countries. Canada's government is under pressure from domestic sectors to take action against China while positioning the country as a crucial link in the global EV supply chain. To attract leading European automakers, Canada has signed agreements worth billions of dollars across the entire EV supply chain. We are inspired and vindicated. Let us now focus on safeguarding our market using the most innovative and determined talent Canadians have to offer, said Flavio Volpi, president of the Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association. With the increased tariffs on Chinese goods, do you think this will only impact vehicles from China, or will it affect consumers in these nations as well? 
Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.